Howdy gamers one and all, it's your pal Day9. Mm, we're getting ready for some Project Zomboidosis. So a little bit about my interaction with this game. I have played about 20 hours of Project Zomboid at the start of last year. And then uh, Elden Ring came out and that's all I really did <laughs> for a long time. And then I tried some Path of Exile and a lot of the issue I was having with last year is that there's just too many good games to be playing. So, um, oh yeah, and then Marvel Snap happened. Look, there's a lot of things happening. And I sort of always had on my radar, I want to play some more Project Zomboid. I want to play some more Project Zomboid. So that's what we're going to be doing today, tomorrow, and Friday. So let's talk about what we are doing in this game. First of all, I'm not continuing on a previous save. Uh, in my previous um, uploads that you've seen on my YouTubes, I found a farmhouse that was far away from everything. It was nice and safe. However, that did mean that it took like 30 real life minutes for me to walk to anything interesting, where I'd spend five minutes bashing zomboys and then 30 minutes running home. So we're going to be doing this on a new save where I'm playing on the survivor setting. I'm going to be playing on Muldraw. And I've sort of crudely cobbled together without that much thought this thing. I'm Nurse Day 9. I'm Nurse Day 9. Uh, we have, we're thirsty, we're pacifist, we just don't like weaponing. But I can see the crap out of things and I learn fast. Some of you said that these are garbage traits. That's great. Let's move on to the next one. Um... <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a four letter four name and we're gonna do a three letter surname and we're gonna do this quickly. We're gonna do this very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. King Sasquatch Dave, could you give me the first letter? Could you give me the first letter of this? Could you give me that first letter, huh? G, that's perfect, G. Russian ally, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Can you give me the second letter? Can you give me the second letter? That'd be perfect. Russian ally, letter two. Oh, we have Ed here. Russian ally, give me letter two. Come on, come on, Russian ally. Come on, come on. We have a four letter first name and a three letter last name. It's gonna be quick. R, gr, great. Um, Ed, Ed the editor, can you give me, can you give me letter three? Oops, I typed letter 34, but really, what I really meant was letter three. Gr. Ah, Z. Ah, yes. This is a Polish first name. Uh, all right, and uh, Zossi. What a treat to see you. Happy New Year, Zossi. Can, can, you, can you close this out strong for us? Can you give us letter four? E. <laughs> Grr. That's our first name. It's it's the it's the noise that like a wet rag makes when it's thrown into a bucket. Um, perfect. That seems really good. Phantom of Aries. Phantom of Aries. Uh, please uh, give us letter one of the last name. We're Gush. Yeah, almost Gushegosh. Gushegosh. Let's do a classic P. That's great. I mean, I. My last name starts with a P. I don't see any issues with that. Uh, Saltine Guillotine, please give us letter two. Letter two would be good for me and you. R, grrsh, per. That's really good. And uh, let's see who. You know what? Steelgar. Steelgar. Please give us the final letter. Don't succumb to peer pressure. Really think, figure out how to make this name your own. You're gonna close us out, Steelgar. K. <laughs> That's great. Do our Gershberg. That's fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and hop in with Gershberg. These are the end times. Let's find out how this goes. See, a lot of people were saying Z because they wanted Gersh Persh. But you, you dug deep and figured out how to really make this one perfect. This is how you died. Alright. 
I ran out of water. I ran out of water. I'm just gonna, let me give me a second. I'm gonna get my water here. I'm just scooping it way out of the way. Ugh, I'm so thirsty. But it's okay, the faucet's right here. Right here. Let's pull this thing in. There we go. Is it me? Is it Gershberg? Is it Gershberg's time to shine? Submersion is so deep. So deep. All right. Oh, nice. I wonder how I open this one. All right. So let's, I'm just going to move this over to here. All right. Oh, that's right. We have this nice little mini map here. Let me go ahead and scoot my booty here. There we go. Oh, we have a carving fork. Yeah, let's let's take a peek around here. Oh, frying pan. Oh my god, my ability to manage this is pretty scary here. So, I mean, Gershberg, oh yeah. So, I think I actually know where we are in this place. I've actually spawned in this house a couple of times. So, help me out here a little bit. Like, what? Oh, dude, I love having these. Um... You know, help, help me out a little bit. What do you think should be some of our early goals here? Because, like, my long-term goal... port disc Huh. Because, like, I think I'm going to be trying to find food. I'm going to be trying to find a watch. Can't see anything here, so let's just open up the uh, the coitins. I <laughs> just jump right out the window. Why is it so dark? Where's where's my high gamma pro gaming? Early goal raid the police station. Yeah, that sounds great. That's like that's like up the street, huh? There's a there's a rifle in here. Oh my god. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this. I can't believe this. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what a start. Well, this is great. You know, I can just like put that on and like hear nothing anymore. Oh yeah, we're like, I love all the writing utensils. Now, I'm, I'm unlikely to ever use this gun. All right, let me grab some of these. See, I think that what I want to do right now, here's here's my goal. My goal is that I want to... Fanny pack? Encumbrance reduction? Oh my god! <gasps> I think I just want to... And if I hit escape, I think it does pause because we're not we're, we're playing solo. So I think my early goals are going to be to get like a, a watch. Um, gonna get some food, gonna get a bottle for some water, that sort of thing, and then I'm gonna start wandering around to try to locate a home base and a backpack. Home base and backpack. So first, I want my little mobile self thingy. Um. So. Let's see. Watch, backpack, food. And then a place to set this freaking gun down. I have a gun. I'm never going to get a gun. This isn't this isn't a base. Yeah, I, I just... I don't really like the houses as early bases because they have, like, so many windows. Wow, that's incredible. So how do you, how do you equip these things? 
All right, it's equipped. All right, we're dropping that crap, man. We're not. We don't need this book at all. No interest in that. Dude, King Sasquatch Dave said, I find it really hard in this game to make goals for myself. It's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, because like, I think that I'm going to try to establish a base. Because he, here's my here's my loose long term, right? First, I'm going to establish like a home base. Or I'm almost going to call it like a temp home base because I'm sure that as time goes on, I'm going to want different needs and different space and stuff like this, right? But I want a, a home base where that I can kind of leave from, collect stuff, go back to. Leave from, collect stuff, go back to. Protect that, get that set up. That's my sort of starting thing. So that's going to require a bunch of survival things like food and bandages and water and so on. And then I want to start being able to set up some long-term survivability like food generation with farming and that sort of thing. Um, now, beyond that, I know that I'm also going to have to have electricity generation in here. And I also know that there's learning type things in there. And I don't really, I don't really know a lot about that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to first start off and just get a, an established home base and then figure things out, which is exactly how I would try to survive the zombie apocalypse in real life. So where's my fanny pack? I want to wear this shit. God, I'm going to look so cool. Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> We're on front. Now, now look at me. Look, I got my fanny pack. I got my satchel. I got my sweet hat. I got my... Dude, Gershperk is fucking sick. All right, so let's, let's see here. So first and foremost, um, probably tuck some stuff away. Now, how, how does this work? Do I click and drag this, put this in the fanny pack? Go ahead and put my rifle in my satchel. Dude, there's something I find so funny about having like a, a gun magazine in my fanny pack and my rifle in my satchel. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to put, uh, oops, I'm going to put the, uh, this into the satchel. Um, yeah, I'll just put the bandages in my fanny pack. Because I think the fanny pack, um, now as a question, how do I see what the stats of these things are? Is it like, Where do I see this? Where do I see that sort of thing? Check inventory. So if I go to, oh, that's right, because this is in my inventory, great. So this has a capacity of one, so we can hold up to basically like one pound of stuff. And is encumbrance, oh, and if I hit M. Haha, <laughs> that's really cute. Yeah, I remember when I did this at first, I was like, holy shit. All right, so let's, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just begin collecting anything that I think is of value. Like this plunger hairspray stuff, like I, I recognize that a lot of the stuff is useful, broadly speaking, in the game. Into the fanny pack. I understand that this is, like, useful in the long run, but I think I want to just focus on basics and safety first. So we have mostly cleared all this out. So now we're looking for water and food and those sorts of things. Magazine. All right. Trying to sit a little more straight in my chair. I have a standing desk and I always like 
accidentally get a little bit too low. Uh, so all of these are here. I'm going to put these with my gun. So right now what we're lacking is something to hold water. I don't have a bottle. Chocolate. Yeah, I'm taking that. All right, so... All right. All right, so... Classic wristwatch. Now I want an electric one. Holy fuck, I'm playing Project Zomboid. My thing fucking broke. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh my god. All right, here we go. Oh, shit. All right, let's scroll back a little bit. Frying pan time. My frying pan broke after one slap. This is legitimately so hilarious. Like, literally, I just started off, and I'm, like, panicked. I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm wandering around with, like, my, my gun and my satchel and my canned food and my fanny pack. This is the game. Yeah. Yeah, do, do, I, do I actually still have that? Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Starting off, breaking after one swing of the frying pan? Oh, yeah, this is the game, for sure. I need to make some more of that. So I don't know if there's a good way to isolate these two. There's an option that puts a green outline around zombies when they're in attack range. We, we, we might wind up using that one. Looks like we broke line of sight with these. So I'm going to like do a little loop. And then I'm going to get that rolling pin. Jump the wall? I sure can. Do I want to jump the wall? Nope. Apparently what I've succeeded in doing is just getting more and more and more. Ah, oh, shit. More and more zombies to start following me around. go you have no idea how esports this is let me tell you I am dialed in I'm not getting zomboided no more Yeah, sit on ground. That's exactly what I want. 
frying pan hadn't have broken, that would have been micro. There's something that I find, like, perfect about this as a streaming game. Because, like, in a moment like this, there's a combination of, like, the intensity of storytelling sitting next to the fact that I'm walking away, I'm trying to, like, build some distance, and that actually takes some time. Extra bacon since I didn't know this was an esports pro project Zomboid stream. That's true. He's an esports pro gamer, you know. Well, good luck to me. Alright, that was a good gamble. Alright. So I need, I still need food. No zombies have come over the wall, which is good. Alright, so there was an option that you guys were talking about, which is the green outline for things in melee range. Is this something here? Is there some, is like, I can someone, can, excuse me, could someone help me out for God's sake? <laughs> Aim outline. I'm sorry, in what menu? Um, I'm a little bit behind you. Oh, oh. Shabadu says right there. Let me be clear, Shabadu. There's often somewhere between a two and 20 second delay from me to you. So when you're like, it's right there. You know, like talking to Sean in the past. <laughs> like there now. You click it there now, right now, and then now. <laughs> Spaceship Brass is the option that makes the game playable. All right, let's try it out. Let's see how this works. You're looking at it now. Holy shit, this game is a joke. This is the easiest game. I'm a little peckish. So, we're going to we're going to clear this nice place. Easy game he says. That's right. Easy game easy life, deniner. Still hear another one to the right. Oh, fuck. Oh, I got bit, didn't I? Okay. Oh, give me a fucking break. I'm just gonna run like this. I think there's one right behind that. So let's go ahead and open up this health panel. Okay, great. Unemployed Shaku just gave us five because we're staying alive. Look at the knife in the back of that one. Need to get better foot accuracy. This one's still there. Fork. Getting cocky 1v3? That's right, one unknown guy. Meet the cleaver. God, I'm already like close to being encumbered.
and you can hear him. You're a brave soul to play this game, Serdantis. You're going to find out real soon that I'm a, I'm a coward. I'm this little scaredy baby. It's going to do a... -dum. Does sound like it's upstairs. Okay. Render, damn it. <laughs> it's gonna go. Brum. What? Oh, oh, these these outlines are doors. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what I was looking at. Can we get a clock? All right, so I'm gonna. Where's a faucet? <laughs> Look, it's me. I stream from here. How tough is the learning curve? Um, I, I actually think it's pretty good. I actually think it's pretty good, to be honest. Well, I am married in real life. May as well get that shit on there. All right. Duffel bag? So, okay, so so I, I have some I have some inquiries. So this says encumbrance reduction, 65%. Does that mean if something weighed 10 pounds, it would be 10 times 65, and that is how much it would be? Or is it that it is 10 times 100% minus 65%? Like it reduces by 65%. An item wing 10 will weigh 3.5. Nice. Yeah, because like that makes sense because if I look at this satchel, the satchel says its encumbrance reduction is 30. So I assume that that trims 30% off the top. If it weighed 10, it would now weigh um, 7. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unequip. So I'm going to be so big. Where's my dufo bag? And I think that um, I think that now what this means is that the satchel. How much is my? Can this be equipped? It can only be equipped on back. Okay, I think I dropped the satchel then. Right? I think I just dropped this shit because I got a better bag. Wait a minute. Where did my gun go? I see them in there. Ah, I see. I click like this. Great. Figuring out the UI. Putting corn in my back. Putting fruit in my back. So, all right. I have some questions. You can control A. Nice. So, in terms of all the bags... Can I put a bag in a bag and get, like, multiplicative reduction? <laughs> Does that work? Huh? I assume no. All right, that seems good. Tarkov style. Yeah, I know. I don't think I'm weird for thinking that. Escape from Tarkov was like, no, you can put a bag in a bag in a bag. Like, what are you talking about? Of course you can put a bag in a bag in a bag. Um... Put the rifle in the bag. 
I can sell it later for bottle caps. What game am I playing? I already have a blue pen. An alarm clock, that's good. Call me Ravenwood. I'm actually intending on playing Dark and Darker when I can get access to it, because it seems... Oh, is that thing fucking vibrating? That sucks. So, I do need a can opener. Your red mug. I mean... <coughs> oh, God. Gross. Oh. Because I actually... I'll be real with y'all. I, I actually like... traditional swords and sorcery style combat. Oh, I'm fucking eating this shit. I like traditional swords and sorcery style combat like way more than I like traditional gunplay style combat. Oh, no, Jesus. Excuse me. So this empty red mug seems pretty small in terms of size. Uh oh. All right. Today's episode of What the Deck is no, sponsored by No, no, fuck! I'm turning that hotkey off. Why does that cat always lean on that specific button? I can't believe this garbage. Disable the hotkey every fucking time. You're kidding me. Today's what? I'm still on the fucking day. Fuck. Okay, so in the refrigerator, there is some... Um... So I'm not going to get any of that stuff quite yet. Holy motherfuck, where'd you come from? Hold on, let me let me let me uh bounce to chat, hit scroll to most recent. Space. Oh shit. Oh, you're alive. My god, you're alive. Alright, so it's getting a little dark. And I don't have a I don't have a watch. So I actually should probably kill some zomboids. So this red means. That red, that's the police station, and that's the Mart. I remember this place. All right, pair of them. Red ones are medical places, I remember. That's, that's the clinic, that's right. All right, I'm going to cross back across the street. And also, let's just make sure I have my my main inventory. Do I have that meat cleaver? Perfect. Gerald Andrews says, I remember this game being 2D. Was it? I think I can take them all out. Is this music new? Oh, they just walked through the hedge. All right, I'm... Gameplay still 2D, yeah. I don't think there's... 
This is how he died. This is not the story of how I died, Chaplon. You're completely wrong. All right, great. Does that guy have a bag over his head? Nice. Yeah, dude, like, is it 2D? Is it 3D? Is it isometric? Is isometric considered 2D gameplay or 3D gameplay? I mean, honestly... Actually, so I want to be really careful with this because they would follow me around this lip, so I want to make sure. At the end of the day, it's all, it's all marketing. I would consider this 2D gameplay. That's how I personally would define this. Two point five D was a term that marketers came up with to communicate. Oh, that's what I'm the marketers came up with to communicate. Yo, dude, did you know that this has two D gameplay but three D graphics? All right, hold on. I'm grabbing this. We're a left side logo gamer today. There it is. All right, so it's currently 1940, which is a time that only exists in Europe. Yeah, I consider I consider this to be uh, I I loosely in my head break things into 2D and 3D gameplay. So Path of Exile, 2D game. Factorio, 2D game. Starcraft, 2D game. This 2D game. When the third dimension is like... When the third dimension is like gameplay relevant, as it is in something like an FPS. Oh, shit. We got so much canned shit in here. Alright, I like carrots a lot. Peaches are pretty rad. Vegetables are pretty fucking rad. All right, no, no, just not, not drinking. Um, see, I, I want to make sure that I actually have. I want to make sure that I actually get a freaking can opener. That's that's pretty clutch, right? We can't really eat very much at all. Peckish. Why is it playing that music? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa where's my... It's broken? All right. Oh, we're not really seeing any particularly notably good loot. I have M9 pistol? Fuck out of here, man. Did y'all hear that? I heard some movement. Shot himself feels bad, man. No, that's 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 a cursed loot right there. I'm not going for that stuff. Oh, dude, holy shit! This is where I would put my books. All right. Ooh, play the piano. Get out of here, Rihugengeist. 
But don't, because I'm happy to see you. But get out of here. But don't. All right, so if I look, got some headphones. Someone was... Wow, electronics. Wow. Okay, so I mean, I'm, I'm just going to take a lot of these skill books. I don't really know how to use the tools yet. And I mean, I know that they will be useful. But again, I'm, I'm looking right now for maybe some... My fanny pack. My fanny pack is full. <laughs> okay. And my health. All right, let's shut this, and then let's wash yourself. It's time to wash a little bit. Do digital watches run out of battery? I don't think a digital watch has ever run out of battery in real life, so. Why are we stretching? Why are we a little shrimp? All right, we're, we're rubbing the tummy while we're washing ourselves. I assume wash myself means wash all aspects of me. All right, it's 2120. So it's like 820, 920, 930. <laughs> all right, looks like that didn't work. Washing all the clothing. Better with that windows, nice. Hell yeah, dude. Antidepressants, adhesives, dead mouse, really good. Vitamins. Nice, shift mouse wheel, great tip. Great tip, I'll probably wind up left clicking. A dead mouse five, he's the musician. Take your vitamins, I'm not gonna do it. I don't take vitamins, I don't do it. If my body wasn't healthy as is, there's no reason to try to make it any better. So, looks like we're getting close to bedtime here. Looks like we're freaking exhausted. So we're, we're probably going to be taking a little nip-nap. A little nip-nap ASAP. Yeah, are we, are we just cleaning ourselves? Dude, let me tell you. Last night, my cat just sat here in front of me and just stared at me while purring. For like the entire night. It was so sweet. Uh, okay, let's drink. Dude, this mug is like just trash capacity. Get your feet wet. All right, so we're 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 gonna do some stuff here real fast. Let me see this. Can I change the size of this? Look at how barely protected I am. A little hot. Okay, so this is crafting. Uh, that's right. What? Oh, that's right. So this is where I can like find rare stuffs. And this is the map that I was looking at before. So yeah, so like this is where we started. So I can actually mark this, nice. No, cat, dude, stop it. Oh, I need an eraser? Oh, this is so annoying. All right, cat, excuse me. She's just like literally lying down on my video mixer. <laughs> Always this girl and her tummy rubs.
All right, so. Ah. Uh, all right, so we're, we're 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 exhausted. Slash, I'm not doing this shit at night. I'm going to bed. All right, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, how do I go to bed? How do you go to bed? What What's happening? What? Why can I not? I'm exhausted. Oh, there it is. I just, yeah, I'm tired. All right, no problem. All right, it's day two. It's five in the morning. Oh, it's raining. I'm so sick. I'm just sick of this. I really should shut more doors before I go to bed, but really today is, is medical clinic clearing day. Getting, getting bored? So what if I'm bored? All right. All right. Yep. Just keep keep snuggling in. Aha! Linda the zombie. Can you live in the clinic? I mean, is that like a rhetorical question? It's another one just below. All right. You can live wherever you want in this game. Yeah, you can just do whatever you need. I mean, I'm bored. Is there one behind me? Ah, there was one behind me. All right, I'm hungry. Can you imagine if a zombie's chasing you and you're hungry? Like, God. Just making sure there's no one else behind. Boredom is an in-game mechanic. It's also an out-game mechanic. The fact that your character gets bored in-game is to make sure that you're not bored out of game. I'm bored. That's... My god, that's so engaging. Yeah, I'm gonna wear this, man. Shit. Fucked up. Did I put on the leather jacket? Yeah. Damn right I did. I love that gun there. Now, there, there is this issue in which I'm about to have a case of the hot bod. Wait, what? Oh, I see. I picked it up, but I didn't equip it. Wow. There we go. All right, excuse me, kitten. Yeah, there should be a mechanic in every game, says one unknown guy. Characters getting bored of farming the same thing forever. I know it would be like playing Path of Exile, just trying to like, trying to get to level 15 for a certain thing, and the game's like, your character's bored. You are no longer gaining experience. Oh, shit. Okay. So the clinic is a place where I generally want to be. Here it is right here, and there's food over here. Oh, shit, that's not a dead one. Okay. Well, I mean, it's... Depending upon what you mean when you say dead, I don't know what you mean. I know what I mean. As long as there's not a bunch of nerds right here. Oh, there they go. No, 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 cat. No, 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 no. <laughs> See my cat just like... Stretching her little little self out here. All right. Yeah, 
Yeah, I saw some bottles in the trash can that I want to pick up and fill some water in a second here. Yeah, the fact that I have a cat should actually have stat-wise difficulty changes. You're right, Democ. We're like, I don't understand what this, what this garbage is. So we're pretty close to being over-encumbered. Okay. This is like the most interesting blend of chill and thrill. Nothing notable. Get him. See ya. All right, great. There it is. I'm told Michael Jackson wrote Thriller after playing some Zomboid. That's true. Don't look it up. So the clinic should just be a nice little spot. It only has one main entrance. Right next to the general store. I don't know why I keep looking. I don't know why I keep looking. Like, why, why am I doing it? How does how does inspecting a car work? What the hell? I'm gonna press look at it and press Oh, that's right, you go to the hood. And car inspections are easier when not hunted by three zombies. What the shit? Alright, so I'm running. So we're going to go out this back door. This is not a back door. We'll go out this way. We're going to loop around the long way. Alright, we're going to drink some water. Geek Mars says you can just carry around a mug of unsealed water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, in fact, I stream with a mug of unsealed water. Next to a cat with an unsealed tummy. Okay. Okay. Careful. Careful. You're going to roll off. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, God. We got... This cat is, like, going insane. She's just flopping down. You can just literally see the cat tummy right here. Here's the cat tummy. She's looking at me. How you doing?
Hey, oh, don't bite me now. I'm gonna use the keyboard with your permission. I just realized how risky that was to, ouch. Unconcealed Water, what is this, Hitman? Oh my god, Hitman is a funny fucking game. Hitman is some fun, funny shit. Oh, that's right, your vision gets longer. Like, th there's just a lot of really small, nice touches that this game has. Where, like, right-click is look, and then if you want to keep looking farther, it, like, very slowly splines in that direction. I'm gonna make sure that my retreat is cleared. Yeah, Hit Hitman, I think, is maybe the purest example that games can be comedy. Like, in their design. Bite me. Uh oh, uh oh. She she's leaning on me. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh Jesus. Oh my god. Oh ah oh, god. Kitten. Oh god, I don't give me my mouse back. Okay. Alright, there we go. Yeah, see, I think that like there's something fundamentally silly about most games. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's something that's just, like, fundamentally silly about most games. Because most games put a demand in front of you. And that demand, in order to communicate the demand and the environment more, games have narrative. So, for instance, if you are told you are going to try to sneak into this bank and rob it, and it's in the 14th century, by knowing the setting, your identity, and your task, and these are real-world things that happen, you just immediately know a bunch of information. It's unabstractified, right? If you think about something like um, chess, chess is very abstract. Pieces move in very exact ways. There's only the loosest... Oh, shit. There's only the loosest of narratives in chess. And, like, th this is done because, you know, if you need to communicate a lot of rules to someone, it can be extraordinarily convenient to just say, oh, hey, you are a thief who's trying to break into a bank and steal some stuff, and also it's the 14th century. And it just contextualizes a ton of stuff. Where's my cereal? Is it in here? Sure is. This should increase my weight capacity. So so th that's like a functional reason why you would include a story or a narrative in a game. But at the same time, there's immediately a mismatch because if I'm a thief who's breaking into a bank, I'm not a thief in real life. I'm not an expert. In fact, I don't, I don't even break laws in most games. Let alone in real life. Like, I have no reference point. And so, as you're trying to, like, learn the controls and trying to do stuff in the game, you just start fucking up. Because you're fucking up, it's hilarious. And I think that's, like, a fundamental silliness that a lot of games just, like, don't acknowledge. Commander. You need to steal everything from that bank. I do? Oh my god. Okay. And then you start messing up the controls and everything goes to shit. Like, playing Goldeneye, it is so hard to just aim the gun in Goldeneye. Like on the N64 with that goofy-ass N64 controller. Like, get out of here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Getting ya. Gotten.
And uh, what I really respect about Hitman, credit card. <laughs> Shit, this is, have you heard the good news? We found someone's credit card on the ground. Yeah, I mean, like, like uh, there's few games that really acknowledge how silly all these things are, how goofy all these things are. And I think that, like, I really deeply respect the fact. Are these empty? Oh, do they need to be out like this? I really respect the fact that Hitman, just like everything about it, is so over the top and so silly and so ridiculous. Constantly rearranging the cat. So if I unpack it like this. How do I, how do I unpack just one? Hmm. How do I do this? How do I place one of these into my main inventory? Little arrow on the left, see separate items. Nice. All right, got it. Got it. And put this one away. All right. What's that? Oh. All right, nice. All right, I'm gonna do a little sweep of the outside. Great. Great, great, great. Snooping, spotting, looking a lot. All right. Took us a bit, but we got to the clinic. So this is like where the upstairs is, huh? Let's do the upstairs first. There's like a really nice little... We, we would just like hang out here for a bit. This is like really nice. Now, if I could find a can opener... Oh my god, fucking home run. Holy shit, this is fucking gr this is great. I can drop my gun off here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the magazine and the rifle over here. This place is, is great. This is, this is the it shit. Um, and on the bookshelf, I'm going to put my books. This isn't a bookshelf. This is a cabinet. Well, when you're a bachelor, there's really not that much of a difference. Are there any bookshelves in this place? There it is. Okay. Okay, great. So now we're going to put carpentry one and two and foraging and electronics, tailoring, Pen, we're just going to dump onto the ground. We don't need that there. Great, 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 great. So I probably don't need quite so much canned food. But let's see here. Uh, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stocking up on the canned shit. I'm going to keep the chili and the beans on me because I just like those foods in my real life. And now I can actually just make it like a little miniature quest for myself. Yeah, can I actually do like this and then... Great. I don't think we'll need the 
pop. Actually, I'll put the pop in the fridge because I'm an adult. And I like know how to be an adult and shit. Like, don't, don't think I don't. What's in the fanny pack? Ah, yes, Metal Warrior Volume 1. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and put this into there. Nice. There it is. OMG, as Jason says, OMG, Mr. Nine is back. I'm here. Here I am. Hey, hey, ease up. You okay? Hi. What's going on? She she wants scritches, but she's also like really flicking her tail, so I can't tell if she's pissed. Oh wait, I gotta I gotta pause this. Do you mind if I excuse me? Yeah, I know you're mad, but you gotta move. Yep, I could tell there was way too much energy in this cat. Now I can pause here. Okay. That that's you in the mirror. Don't worry, that that's you. <laughs> it's just she found she found the mirror and she sees herself and she's like, this is fucked up. I'm like, no, you didn't put on any weight. You look beautiful. W Corwin, how are you doing? All right, so this is this is amazing. Look, I I've literally deposited so much good stuff. Great, awesome. So we got some water bottles here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get to the sink. Fill all. We're going to bit peckish. All right, I'll wait till I'm actually properly hungry. Um, all right, so I've already started setting up shop here. I should probably actually clear this area. Uh, I'm actually going to take these things, and I'm going to just dump them over here. Put the newspaper on the bookshelf. There's a lot of stuff in there now. There's a lot of stuff in there now. Okay. So. Not what I wanted to do. Okay. And what's in this one? This is just like a weird little... Oh, it's, it's just the ball. Adhesives to the fanny pack, baby. Painkillers to the fanny pack. Sewing kit. That's... That's pretty good, huh? So this this is... I live here now. This is my home. So now I need to spend the afternoon clearing this place out. Mm -hmm. right, let me let me just clear this place first. Nice little waiting room. Did they add music? Like more? Because I know there was music before. Dude. Dude, I might literally just leave all this stuff here. Because I already, I already have three adhesive bandages. Maybe I'll just put another bandage in the fanny pack. What the fuck was that? What was that? What on earth was that? Brrr. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what was that? It's like Dark Souls. I didn't hear it. Other players join? Wait, but I, I thought... I, I, I said it to... I'm playing on solo. You didn't hear that? Okay, so first of all, did, did, did you guys hear that? Was this... Did this happen outside? Like my own home? Oh my god. You know what? I'm turning up the game.
Someone, someone was shooting outside. Dude, look at this. Look at all the stuff we have in here. Oh my god, yeah. Scalpel. All right, so this we got we got like gold in here. This is great. This is Okay, so let's make sure that we actually have curtains on everything here. Okay, so this is where I need to learn how to make coitins. Alcohol actually go in the fanny pack. Great call. Yeah, I forgot that I need to be looking for this. There we go. To the fanny pack. I didn't even see it there the first time. Okay. So I'm going to loop back to the place I was just at, and I'm going to get some curtains to cover all these windows. Yeah, I actually want to take a moment. I actually want to take a brief moment to talk about what I think is really interesting, because some people have been asking, hey, what's the goal? What's the goal? What's the goal? Now, if you have watched this channel at all, you know that I love when games give a really clear goal. I think clear goals are essential for a certain category of player. When I say a certain category, I mean like... I'm not talking about like, oh, here's here's a uh, hundred different types of players and for these three types. I mean like, I think close to 80-90% of players can't engage with a game unless there are extremely explicitly robust goals. Um... And I'm, I actually don't like how I framed that. Let me let me come at it from a different angle. There is a game like Minecraft where there's technically not a real goal with the game. There's like technically you just explore around, build whatever you want. You can go on some adventures. And you're just kind of constantly experiencing stuff. And I have a hard time engaging with Minecraft because if I look at an empty cliff, my old roommate Kyla, she'd be like, I'm going to build a castle on that cliff. For me, I'm like, where, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to be doing, huh? Come on, come on. So when I say goal, what I'm talking about in that context is like a larger overarching goal structure. That's that's what a, a game like Minecraft, I feel like you, the player, have to come up with it yourself. Now, in a game like Dota 2, you have the very clear goal that everyone is going to try to win this game by pushing down lanes and destroying the ancient. And as I've played a huge variety of games over the years, I've also had the opinion, um, I'm not going to call it an opinion, I'm going to call it the well-researched, thoughtful design insights that my brain concocted out of thin air. Which is that I also think that having an explicit end goal is very different than having short-term sub-goals that are going on, these little short-term thingies. So, for instance... Um, in a game of StarCraft. Favorite game of all time, StarCraft. Love StarCraft. Your goal is to make the enemy player quit. Uh, technically, the win condition of the game is destroy all enemy buildings. But really, you're trying to get to a point where there's just no way that they can possibly overcome your huge army. What are the steps to get there? It's so unclear, I was able to make a career out of answering that question. <laughs> Um, and so I think that there's a different kind of goal, which is like the steps that are happening along the game and understanding the steps towards winning. Uh, let me actually be a slightly more abstract. The, what, what am I doing that I can say I am successfully stepping in the right direction for my goal? In a game of like Hearthstone where you have 30 health, you deal some damage, they're at 25 health. 
I did a good thing. I am stepping in the right direction. I hit them again. I'm now at 18 health. Oh, they're hitting me and my health is going down. So I killed the enemy creature that was dealing damage to me. That's preventing me from losing. So now I can get back to getting this health number down. Like healths like this, I think are incredibly helpful for providing sub success cases on the way to that goal. And I think it's those little short term, did I do a good thing? 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 The more clear you can make those steps, the easier it is for someone to achieve the goal. And more importantly, the easier it is for someone to actually engage with the fun of the game. So something like Dota 2, did I get a last hit? Nice. Did I get a last hit? Nice. Did I get a last hit? Nice. You have that super short-term goal. Oh, I picked off an enemy. That's good. And this is super reinforced by not only is it good because it can help you push the lane because your opponent's dead, so you can push the lane and eventually get towards killing the enemy uh, ancient, but also the game just gives you money, which lets you succeed at that actual goal more. Like it constantly bludgeons into your head these short-term things. So um, coming all the way back to what I was starting saying earlier, I love when games give me really precise statements of here is your goal. Here is your goal, and here's a bunch of problems in the way of the goal. And then the fun for me is figuring out how to use my tools to overcome those problems to satisfy that goal. So why the hell am I enjoying Project Zomboid? Because it doesn't exactly have a really clear ultra long-term goal. I mean, survive, right? Like the super long-term thing. So it might be easy to say, well, isn't that kind of like Minecraft where there's not really a super long term goal with Minecraft? It's kind of like whatever you want to do with it. But for me, the difference between this and a Minecraft is that this has these really harsh, punishing problems right in front of my face. So I'm like, oh, my goal is to just get some food and to not die. Get food, don't die. Get food, don't die. And that's like really hard. That actually like consumes a lot of my brain and analysis and thinking and behavior. That's like really, really fun. And then um, once I've done that, I'm like, oh shit, I really kind of need to create a sustainable food system in this game. Or the, the power is going down. Fuck, how do I actually generate for myself some electricity to do X, Y, Z things? So the fact that there's these short-term, really, really, really harsh goals or excuse me, really harsh problems thrown in front of me, then I'm like, oh my God, I really need to start figuring out how to address that issue. And I think that that is what I find really compelling about the game is that like I'm pausing and I'm getting this like, oh, okay, all right, I'm just taking a little moment. Okay, now my short-term goal is get curtains and hang them up so I can really establish my little base here. And I find that really pleasing. I make my own sheets, but I'm just going to remove all these curtains from these. GH Steel says, my only problem with Zomboid is that you can get to a point where you don't need to leave your base and there's no real danger. Yeah, this is, this is actually where, like, I find being blunt with the players, like, great. Because <laughs> you can be like, all right, player, what you need to do, open up. What is this? What is this weird torture chamber? How do I get, how do I even get to this room? Oh, it's the kitchen. All right. Um, oh no, what did I just say? Oh yeah, yeah. This is where I think that you can be like unbelievably blunt with a player and be like, yo, dude. There are going to be a series of missions that you need to complete over the next hundred days. And that's the challenge.
Because, like, I, I don't know what it is about me, whether I'm, like, my, my brain is broken or something like this, but I, I really feel like if you're not telling me, I, I just don't, I, I have such a hard time having fun. Like, in something like StarCraft, all right, destroy the enemy player. On one hand, you've heard me wax poetic. Oh, I love how the player gets to express themselves and do all this garbage. Uh, actually, I can probably do a run and grab some of the things from this house as well. Like, oh, there's so many different forms of expression that you can do. Oh, me, oh, my. But, like, really? Truly? 70-80% of it is, for me, the experience of just figuring out how to... How to win. And the fact that I had my own solution to it is great. I really like the fact that I had my own solution to it. It's fantastic. Be super over encumbered. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, so we can actually get some. Great. Great, great. I thought I heard you. Sunny Munchkin says, "Is this not one of the sickest survival games ever made?" I mean, it's 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 spectacular. And as as a metric for why I think it's so spectacular, I don't like survival games. Broadly speaking, I don't like them. And it's because survival games, broadly speaking, did I hear another one? Survival games are broadly fucking terrible. Can we, can we all agree on this? They're so bad. Most survival games are just awful. Got a pin. I mean, they're so bad. Yeah, I mean, like, th there are good survival games. Let's let's get that right. Like, there, there's... Like, okay, there's, there's certain things that, for some reason, attract a lot of amateurs. And when I say amateur, I don't mean amateurs are bad, professionals are good. I mean amateurs as in, I've never made a game. I'm not employed as a game developer. I just... I want to make this. Let's just get some of my buddies together. We're just going to make something. We're not doing it professionally. I mean, maybe it'll turn to a product we can sell, but let's just, like, do it. Like, like, drum and bass is a genre of music I really like. It is one of my top three most listened to genres. I love drum and bass. There is some fucking trash. Like, every time I, I'm like, all right, it's time to... Oh, it's time to try to listen to some new drum and bass albums to see if there's anything good out there. And I, like, put it on, and I'm, it, it's literally aggressively awful. Like, I'm putting it on, ah, shit, my wife's like, oh my god, are you all right? Did something happen at work today? I'm a, <sighs> I tried to listen to some new drum and bass albums, and she's like, I'm so sorry, lie down, we're gonna have a spa night. It's fucking awful. And survival, that genre is the drum and bass of game development. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> or like, or like amateur rap. All right, I got this beat, and I absolutely think I have some killer bars and it's, it's like, <laughs> I mean, actually, amateur rap is, it's actually incredible because there's stuff that's so bad it's good, but then it's so bad that it's gone past being so bad that it's good and it's just bad again. Like, that's fucking there as well. Like, survival games are 
so shitty. There's so many of them that are so bad because there's like some, there's some kid who's like, oh my God, I just finished my coding boot camp and I'm actually getting some income, but my dream is to make a survival game. All right. Can I punch trees for wood? Can I punch rocks for stone? Can I make an hatchet? All right. We're ready to go to early access. What the fuck? Back up, back up, back up. Why are we in early access? Why are we in early access? My dream is to make a survival game that will compete with World of Warcraft. You can punch two different physical objects, which are the bedrock to the survival. What are we doing in early access? And why are you charging $5 for it? Like literally, you should be, like the CIA should come crashing through your window and throw you in jail for fraud for charging $5 for this rock punching pile of garbage. Like, what are we fucking talking about? Like, what are you doing? I don't understand what it is. So when you're like, isn't this just one of the best survival games ever made? You're right. I think this is so good. It overcomes my natural aversion to this genre to the point where I'm actually going to dedicate probably another 30 to 60 hours over the next few months just streaming it. It's so good. But it's also the pearl that's sitting on the mountain of garbage. Okay. It's so bad. It's so fucking awful, man. This genre is so bad, man. I can't believe it. Like, there's a couple of genres out there. I too will make a roguelike. Like, roguelikes are great. And if someone's like, I'm interested in making a game, what should I start with? You could consider a roguelike. You could consider a platformer. That's fantastic. Like, I think this is this is a good thing to do. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm over encumbered. It's a good thing to do. It's fine. But boy, are there a lot of fucking absolutely just fucking turbo trash. Just like absolute omega garbage that's lurking around out there. And you know what I think it is? You know what I think it is? I think people... This is a good thing for me to rant about. I'm stomping on a fucking zombie that used to be a human being. I think people need a little bit more shame. You know what I mean? Can we just be a little bit more ashamed, please? I think a little bit of shame is good. Because I think if I made some tree punching and some rock fisting in order to make a hatchet, and I thought, should anyone give me money for this? I would go, no. Because if I did that, I'd be ashamed. You know? Like, this is just, it's not prevalent enough. And I wish to close the curtains. All right, here we go. Let's put some of these little sheets in front of you little sheets. <laughs> yeah, the shame awards. Uh, smash windows, probably not what I want to do. Add window, there we go. Why don't I sell it? Because I'm fucking embarrassed. Like, you need a little bit of that. Like, I think that to do something creative, you need a good, healthy mix of ego and shame. I can do it better than anyone else, but what I've done is trash. Like, you need that combination, I think. Now, obviously, I'm exaggerating this more and more over time because it's entertaining. But there is a nugget of truth in the fact that there's so many survival games that are bad. How much do I weigh? It's too much! I'm ashamed. <laughs> Favorite rant in the last year? Thanks. Thanks, Jess. How you doing, Jess, man? Oh, is there a sheet in here? Oh, it was a sheet of paper. Call it realistic self-awareness than shame. Yes, but it's not catchy enough. It doesn't get me views. <laughs> and that's the only reason I'm doing any of this garbage. Can I, um, add a sheet? Alright, the game is like, you can't fly. And I'm like, why not? Oh, it's around this corner. All right, close. Oops. But I mean, like, like you want some A-plus survival games? 
Subnautica. 10 out of 10. It's so good. Formal shirt. It's so good that I opted to stop playing it because it was so scary and yet wanted to watch a bunch of playthroughs of it because it's so unbelievable. Created visceral thrills. I couldn't get in any other game I've ever seen. Wow, no, no window in the bathroom. You leave a stinky one, that's that's basically that. Lovers, Subnautica is janky as fuck and it's only held up by its atmosphere. Really? Because I, I didn't experience a lick of jank. Not even a lick of jank. Thanks for tuning into Day 9 TV where we learn to lick a jank. <laughs> Ooh, Psychotic says Subnautica crashed 10 hours in and I never picked it up again. That happened to me with the Talos Principle. I wanted to cry. I think I actually did. I think it like crashed and I was just like, I was really enjoying streaming that game. It's fucking... I didn't drop any of my cans. Time to use a very rare run. Could use with a lie down. You know what? I'm not lying down yet. Like I can fuck right off. Jankum bulkum. Dude, yeah, let me tell you, like, um, uh, Unknown Worlds, the devs of Subnautica, they launched that really early. Really early. In early access. And, like, iterated on the fuck out of it. And did all this great data tracking stuff. That's like, that's like user feedback stuff done right. Because... <laughs> the number of devs that are just like, we cherish the feedback of our players. And what they're really doing is just doing some large-scale data and going, uh, can we monetize that? We can? All right, good. Does the data show that players aren't quitting too much? Good. We're listening to the players. Uh, we're <laughs> or, or the other end of the extreme where they're like, we have no idea what we want to do at all. So, you know, we're just letting the players tell us what to make. The players said that thirst was too harsh. So we deleted thirst from the game. Were developers. Um, but then you have like the, the devs of Unknown Worlds that were like, we are trying to make a game with no combat. It is a combat free game. We have a really exact and specific setting that we're interested in delivering. And then they took feedback to help them work towards that desired experience. I was actually looking like Subnautica that has sold some millions had like in early access, it had like tens of players playing at times. To the hood. I didn't clear this area. Holy shit. Holy shit. Millions of years of evolution has taught me that if there's this much green, then it must mean life. This is, this is a 3N radio van. Holy shit. This is it's a nice van. Grovax says, players may know what they want, but they're wrong most of the time. I swear someone said that as a developer, but I don't have the data to back it up. That's been said by a shitload of developers, and, and developers say this constantly. Like, like, oodles, loads. Enter. One. Oh! Stand up, you fuck. But I think the, the most famous one was J. Allen Brack, who was like the EP or... One of the head honchos of World of Warcraft, and people were saying like that they wanted things to be more like vanilla. Oh shit! People had been saying things like we want it to be more like vanilla, and he's, he was like, "Well, you think you know what you want, but you don't." And players use that as evidence to like, "Oh, World of Warcraft is the 
biggest pile of shit ever, and it's this guy's fault for saying that. And then Vanilla came out, and it did really well, and oh my god. And, dude, <laughs> and I'm gonna be real. It's, it's such a good meme-worthy thing. It's such a good meme-worthy thing. However, that guy was completely fucking correct. Okay, can we be honest? <laughs> can we be honest? I, I don't even know what I want right now. Okay. <laughs> like, this is the most spot on comment ever, right? I think that it's accurate to say they took the development in a direction that they thought was best. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people do, but maybe they could have done better. That's fine. That's a fine statement. <laughs> when you say that, like, well, we players know what we want. It's vanilla, right? Vanilla comes out and everyone's like, yeah! And then they release another expansion and everyone's like, yeah! <laughs> is this an anytime money machine? What is this? Yeah, and I think it's like, here's the thing. Here's the thing about expertise. Expertise is not going from 0% correct to 100% correct. Expertise is going from 5 to 10% correct to 40 to 50% correct. Or actually, let's maybe make this more accurate. It's going like 1% correct to 15% correct. Experts are wrong all the time, but they're 15 times better than me or you at their thing, okay? And then a non-expert is right. And they're like, well, I was right because there must be something magical about me. Or you just roll to one on your 1% D100, right? Get in. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go with my usual plan of clearing the store, looting it, and bringing it back. Is there any of these that I can open? Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think all the catastrophizing about that stuff's a little, a little inaccurate. But yeah, man. Jalen Bragg gets it, man. Totally gets it. But that, that. Will he ever live that statement down? No, absolutely not, because that is the nature of the internet. So now that I think there's no one nearby... How do I do this, where I, like, put a thing on there? Oh, yeah. Phone comment was much worse. <laughs> That's pretty funny, man. What do you guys not have? Phones? God, like, it's just, it's such a reasonable thing. It's just such a fine joke. The joke is fine. The joke's fine. What do you guys not have? It's just a fine joke. Is he doomed forever? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Could he have said it better? Yeah. Oh, I need to do this. Yeah, yeah, that's actually probably... Yeah, 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 maybe it's the how, how you say it. Well, I, you know, because I think that the... I think we're seeing an example of this, like, right now. 
uh, with League of Legends, where my understanding is that League of Legends always does this like, it's the new year, here's a cinematic that's going to get you pumped for the next season of Leg of Legos. And instead they did a cinematic that was... I didn't see it, but I'm sure it was fine. But that's the thing, is it was a cinematic that didn't align with people's expectations. And I think expectations are... Expectations are like a different thing than actual content. Oh shit, my shit is full? Oh fuck, my shit is full. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna eat that. That looks delicious. Do you hear that? Commander says, I can't say I agree with this comment considering you didn't see it. <laughs> it's very hard for me to defend me. I'm like, well, no, I didn't see it, but I bet it's fine. Uh, let me let me let me actually nuance my statements as to not like argue myself into a corner, thereby deleting the value of what I, of the point I was trying to make in the first place. Where's this other? thing. Is there the pantry? So I'm like so fucking over encumbered. Did you hear that? Did you hear that little footstep? What the fuck is that? I'm getting that. Just a weird thing that's listed there. Um, all right, going home. All right, I need to navigate my way home with all of my attention. And when I get back to that house, unload my stuff, take a nap, get up, we're going to talk about player expectation and how to achieve great expectations. Eh, literature fans? Eh, eh? Literature fans were like, oh, fucking killer. Love that joke. More like, more like Gersh Perk Medical, am I right? Huh, I wonder why it's wobbling. Jofu says, I hope you say it makes sense that fits my sensibility. Oh, shit. The joke was right in front of us all along, and I didn't even see it. All right. Oh, shit. I keep hitting E when I shouldn't hit E. Go. Oh. Oof. What's what's this? Discomfort zone doesn't feel right? Okay, what does that even mean? I know I'm too hot. All right. Let me just close the daisy chain of doors. All right, we're going to bed. I think I got an encumbrance injury. Not in the door. Yes. Yes, I'm tired. I wish to sleep. Care too much. I've hurt myself. Okay, so I want to talk about expectations, right? Because I think that this is an easy mistake to make if you're developing a product, if you're working in entertainment, if you're if you're doing anything at all at any time to anyone for any reason. Which is that there's there's a world of difference between the substance of the content that you're creating and then 
what people are actually expecting. Because if someone has an expectation and you don't hit it, grounds for, for upsetness to occur. I shouldn't say grounds, but perhaps likelihood of upsetness can occur. So um, let's take, for instance, imagine that in my game, let's say I'm, I'm working on a card game and January, every year at the start of the year, there's a huge announcement video with a really sweet cinematic. And then I announce what's happening for the next year and what cards we're going to release over the course of the year. Right? Cool. And let's say we do this three years in a row. And then on year four, there's just a flash screen that shows the logo for the next year. And then I go straight into the announcement that shows, here's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the year. Now, in this example, the substance, which is what content is happening over the next year, that was consistent every single time. But if you expect a cinematic, a cinematic has a certain amount of prestige, a certain amount of spend, and kind of represents a polish and a commitment. And if I suddenly don't have the cinematic at the start, people just immediately start to go, well, that didn't match my expectations. Does this mean that they're not going to be investing as much in their card game anymore? Oh, fuck. Well, then why, why didn't you have the cinematic? And you know my opinion on why didn't you. But that's what a question occurs because you did it last year. You did it the year before that. You did it the year before that too. What's different about this year? What happened? Hmm. Hmm. And that's, that's the sort of funny thing about expectations. Um, just because you expect something to happen and it doesn't happen doesn't actually mean that anything bad occurred but it does start to just be like what what the heck so like and i think that it's it's relevant that i don't think that the right question to ask is what happened why wasn't day nine's card game you know not having a cinematic trailer what's going on i think the answer to that question is not relevant because it is separate from what were expectations and were they being met and I'm going to make up a bullshit ratio, but let's imagine that we do the cinematic on year one, do the cinematic in year two and year three, and then year four, we don't have one. And then let's say, bam, we did the cinematic on year five. All is not well. Our player base would do something like, huh, okay, well, I did it again this year. Well, that's good. But like, our company would have to like do cinematics like two more years in a row for people to go, okay, that was an exception year and everything's okay. I feel like you need a ratio of like four meeting or surpassing of expectations for everyone failing or missing of expectations. Like there, there's like a ratio that's not one to one. It's like four to one or six to one or some shit like that where... Um, here, five hundred says this is like a story of arch nemesis and Poe. Like I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, see, like SC Kepper says the riot thing isn't just the cinematic. They changed all the North American LCS game times to noon PST without any real communication. Yeah, and I think it's like on weekdays. It's like noon on weekdays or something like that. Um. And so it's kind of one of those things where I expect that LCS will be on the weekend all the time. There we go. Um, and then I don't think that is as much an expectation thing as it is just like an announced change. But if the announced change feels negative and a missed expectation also feels really negative, again, I feel like there needs to be like a 4Xing of positive slash expectation surpassing to like make up for that. And I, I think that that is like an important thing to note that like if you are creating a product especially now that communication lines are easy with Twitch and Twitter and various other social medias of communication. You have your creative product and you have your communication and expectation management with respect to this product. Um, very simple example, if you look at any author that has a long running book series where there are those that release a book every year, on the year, every year, on the year, they release another one, they release another one. And when they like miss a year, and there's like a gap here. You just like go to forums and read people being like, well, that's weird. Did he miss it? Like that's, 
very strange. This guy had like a 12-year streak, and he stopped. Oh, my God, what's going on with Lee Child? Is he all right? I miss my Jack Reacher, you know. Um, and again, if you look at the grand scheme of things, the idea of someone pounding out books one a year, every fucking year, and more or less nailing it, and then having like, you know, a gap here, a gap there, we would view retrospectively, looking after 30 years, we'd be like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, this guy, this guy owns. But again, in the moment when that there's that expectation miss. So for instance, if you published a book and then said, hey, everyone, I am taking a nine-month writing hiatus. Don't expect a book next year. Then everyone just goes, oh, okay, cool. And then when people are like, hey, where's that book? Where, isn't, doesn't he release one every single year? People go, oh, no, look, he, he actually made this post saying he's just not going to do it. He's just going to take his hiatus. And then that's great. Then it's like completely fine. So I actually want to see this. I need to. While I'm cleaning myself, I'm going to just refill my water. I keep forgetting that I can exit this way. All right, wow. Out of the way, green screen. Is over here, yep, and then I should do this, and then it will correct the color, and all will be fine. So I'm cleaning myself up. And I want to stress that I think there's a difference. I think I have all my water bottles in my inventory. I wonder what's so... Oh yeah, let me... Where? Where's, where's all my weight coming from? So I want to see this. This is... Two pounds, there's some pens and pencils, got a pound. So most of it's actually in the duffel bag. So, can someone help me understand something? This says that it's holding five. And then here it says that its weight is, oh, because that it itself has weight, of course. Right, here's here's all my canned shit. Fuck yeah, dude. This cupboard is getting yoked. I don't know what that is. I was gonna drop that book off. Book's pretty heavy, actually. So if I hit this little arrow, nice. Oh, how many how many dried fruit cocktails was that? Oh, I had, I had six. That's what's happening. It was getting cut off. Okay, so now if I look at my normal inventory, I should have, like, way less. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, what the fuck is happening? I don't understand. Okay. So, I'm going to finish this bit. I'm going to finish this rants in a pants. And then we're going to set ourselves a new goal as we step forward.
So, um, um, my basic argument is that, you know, I'm bringing up riot and people freaking out and grabbing pitchforks and stabbing each other. Um, I think this is an interesting example of, I don't think my point is, were they justified in doing that? Was there an explanation for it? What actually was going on? No, I disagree with what your analysis is. Here's my analysis. You know, these, these, these types of factors. All I'm trying to point out is that separate from all those questions, there's a statement when you manage players' expectations in advance or consumers' expectations in advance, it avoids even any concern about this sort of thing because all of these have answers. And I'm going to use my author example because it's it's very simple. Of Let's say I wrote a book, one a year for 10 years, and when I release the 10th one, I say, hey, everyone, happy to have hit this milestone of 10 books. Next year, I am not going to be doing a lot of writing, and I'm not going to be publishing anything until two years pass. So look for it in 2025. That is a great way to get the message out right now. And then people go, oh, okay, he's taking a year off. Hey, I wonder where that book is. Oh, well, I feel emotionally fine because I understand what my expectation was supposed to be. Um, and uh, Devasaki says, honest communication isn't always good marketing. And again, I'm not talking about necessarily honest slash transparent communication. Um, I'm just talking about expectation management because let's imagine that um, I didn't want to tell anyone that I was taking a year off of writing. I just didn't want to say that. So what I'd say is, hey, everyone, I'm excited for the future books. Um, due to the, you know, the complexity of what's coming, I expect that it'll be that I won't be publishing one every year for the foreseeable future. And that's it, right? Like all of a sudden people are just like, oh, okay, yeah, writing 10 books and then writing book 11, 12, and 13, 14, that must be pretty, that must be hard. Oh, okay. And maybe the reason is that I'm just completely mentally burned out and I don't want to talk about that. So I'm not lying. I'm just not sharing all the transparency of what's going on with me. I'm just like, hey, everyone, we're going to slow down the pace of publishing these going forward. Boom. I didn't even say anything. I just said, we're going to slow down the pace of publishing these. Oh, I wonder why. Oh, yeah, it seems, seems fine. You know, you, you still don't have the answer to the question of, why, why did Sean slow down on his book writing? But you actually have your expectations properly managed. We're going to slow down the rate of publishing, everyone, just to keep your expectations in check. People will still ask those questions, but again, they'll feel better while asking it. Open the door. Shut the door. Close the door. So, let's see. If I look at my map outside while I'm vulnerable, I really need an eraser to get rid of that. There's a police station up here, if I recall correctly. I wanna kinda explore. Holy fucking shit! It's fine. This is the game. Disastro 7, gifting 5 on our beautiful Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you. I also need another weapon, don't I? Because right now I just have this. Oops. Busted meat cleaver. Hmm. You know, I didn't actually go around the other way. Didn't actually go around the other way. Yeah, and I, I just think that it's a statement of, like, if you manage expectations, you get a certain... Well, here, here's a weird way to frame it. If I say, I want to work on the game, I will be writing code and making art. If I want to work on my taxes, I will be working with an accountant and writing down forms. And if I say, man, I really want to do my taxes, <laughs> I shouldn't open up the game and fucking write code. You know what I mean? 
Like, and all of you are going, yeah. And the reason I'm saying this is because I think that it's it's valuable to frame the style of work that needs to be done for expectation management as being completely unrelated in a way to the work that you will be putting into the product itself. So in other words, if I'm behind on my schedules and I, I haven't gotten around to writing my, my darn book, 11, and people are like, Sean, where's book 11? And I'm like, oh, I'm seeing a lot of people who are upset about book 11 not being done. I should really sit down and write. That, again, that that is, that is, it's related, but in a way it's like completely freaking different. There was a guy right fucking here. Follow a message from Disaster when you got a moment? Absolutely. Thanks, Ghosty. The best mod in the universe. There's a guy above and to my right, and I don't know where the guy is. I'm pretty pleased that I played for three hours and not died. Shift is you'll have a lot of the best mods. Oh yeah, we have the best mod team in the universe over here. Come on, Curse Perk. Famous last words? There's no such thing as last words on this channel, Pan Psychotic. It's never happened. Overall body status? Okay. Will these guys change up their speed a little bit? The hunt never end. Got some. Briffs. All right. We we're talking about something, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah, but I think I think I'm done talking about expectation management. I think that that's that's that that I think it's just like again, if I am writing a book. People are complaining that I'm not going fast enough. It's easy to be like, well, I need to write faster. And I think it's also fine to acknowledge that these are interrelated. But still, managing the expectations is its own unique kind of thing. So now I'm going to pause, because Ghosty, there's a message from Disastro, who just kindly gifted us a lovely 10 subbies. So this says, Dan, I want to thank you for being a wonderful streamer and even better person. Oh. <laughs> My... My streaming takes second place to me as a human? I'm sorry, I'm teasing. Started subbing while I was going through a difficult divorce. You helped me by offering a fun stream to hang out and relax with some of the best people on the internet. Fast forward to this week, and I just accepted a new position in my company moving from production to database reporting and analytics. I'm excited about my newest life changes and wanted to share some subs to the best streamer. Oh my god, thank you, Disastro. And, dude, breakups, divorces are tough. They are tough. I'm 36 now. Holy fucking shit. I will go this way. Because again, what I'm looking for is a replacement weapon. There's that fucker. Because I, I, I feel like I always want to back up weapon. In case this one breaks. I didn't check my home base, which I probably should. But you know, in my 20s, a lot of the people that were dating in college got married. And then in my 30s, a lot of those relationships ended. It broke. Ended for one reason or another. And often it's not because, like, 
Someone was a true villain. Can't fix your weapon. Nope, sure can't. Oh my god. Empty bottle of bleach. Jesus, that's grim. But I think actually quite accurate for how people would be reacting in the moment. Is this really what I'm going to be equipping? Yeah. Hopefully I get something better. But yeah, you know, like there's... Uh, I think that that's like a really difficult aspect of... As you age, sometimes what your relationship was in your 20s, you change and they change and it just doesn't work out. And it's just, oops. Close window. Close curtains. And I think that that can be incredibly hard. So I'm glad to hear that you're like, you know, acclimating to the change and congrats on the new position that's like terrific bible readings revelation <laughs> more at 1337 is glad i started dating past my 30 dude i i i have no idea what dating would be like because I'm 36, and I've been with Britt for 10 years now, so. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, like, I'm kind of out of the loop. Like, for instance, I I don't know how Tinder works. Like, I've never, like, I mean, I know, like, literally how it works, but I, like, I don't know what the experience is like or any of that stuff. Okay. There's an upstairs in this home, isn't there? Doesn't look like it. All right, so I, I'm gonna try to loot these houses, but really, my main goal, and this is so risky to do, is to make my way up this way. I need an eraser before I mark this map anymore. Thought I saw a staircase, lol. I mean, could be. All right, I'm sneaking. I'm sneaking. I'm sneaking. Just got here. What's our name? It's, uh, let me show you. Gersh Park. I want, I want an axe and a frying pan. What was that? It's like a stealth attack when they're looking right at me? Oh yeah, that's esports. So, I mean, I feel like we're going to soon enough be obligated to clear out the... Is that one over here? Yeah, it was inside the house. They came from behind.
Wait, is that is that Crady I see? Hold on, I'm gonna run away. Is that you, Crady? That I saw typing? I mean, I can't quite exit right now. Holy shit, my weapon broke. Could have walked ahead and stood on that person. What is going on? Okay, so for for these for these little for these tiny babies that are on the ground, can I just like stomp them? Oh my god. Red for the underpants, my god. Alright, so now I gotta sneak in. I gotta find some other kind of weapon, because we don't have one right now. Brutal, savage, wrecked. Indeed! Can I... Can I use one of these as a weapon? All right, here we go. All right. All right, so this this is Oh, that is the kitchen. Okay. Why not? Why not? A bread knife. Oh my god. Oh my god, a bread knife, that's it? Alright, uh, well this is... Dude, I genuinely am unsure if I should continue to press forward. Go back. There used to be a giant horde here. Go back the way I came. They added a lot more music to this game. That kind of surprises me. This is better than Seven Days that I've never played it. Never played it. They left. It's safe now. Yeah, I mean, it feels safe. It certainly does. 
Yeah, here, here's where I started. I started right there, where it says FD, FD, F plus D, uh, asterisk 9. <laughs> so right now I'm just looking for a weapon, but I also think it might be valuable to clear this neighborhood. Gears of the town team, the sound team for this is the same one that did Alien Isolation. Not sure if they do any music, though. That's interesting. Oh, nice. Easy. Oh, yeah. First person? Yeah, I'm not messing with first person stuff, man. That's for sure. Heard the map is big on Project Zomboid. Yeah, I'll show you it in a quick sec. What a Basilix 116B. All right, get out of here. Bye, bye, bye. All right, good. Yeah, so here's the map. So here is, here's where I started. So yeah, it's pretty big. Pretty big. Hmm. Oh, it opened. Fuck yeah. Playing permadeath? Well, kind of. Like... My understanding is that if you die in this game, you're just... Your character is dead, but you respawn in the same world. I might do some learning uh, on the next day. Who doesn't love eating eggplant? All the canned foods I could ever want... Eggplant is poison. That's not true. Eggplant is the best thing that you could ever do with your time at all. Well, I don't mind if I do. Looks like we found our weapon. Hit him with the saucepan, baby. <laughs> See, I want to go to a police station and get a proper weapon. So, let's see. My goals right now is a mix of, like, clear this neighborhood... And continue to work my way towards this police station. Hello. Hi. This thing rules. Heard of a game called Pentiment? Yeah, I heard about that. It's like a, a really beautiful story-driven RPG from... Um, I was, it was one of the early people at Black Isle, whose name somehow is escaping me. This thing is incredible. Josh Sawyer, that's right. Playing Pentiment this week? Hell yeah. Let me be diligent and clear the house first. It's like twice now I've like opened up a door in a quiet house and there's just someone there and it goes brump and I'm like, ah! Especially when it felt like the mode that I was playing earlier it was just like way more quiet. Letting that tension build.
Can these break? Dude, I'm just going to collect as much canned food as humanly possible. No, actually, I don't need to do this. Who am I kidding? I should do this at home. Drink. I ha this is the saucepan in my hand. I can literally fill up my freaking saucepan and just beat people in the head with it. Feel like that'll be... These seem useful. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm planning on doing a little mini break where I use the restroom and I take out my dog. She will be wanting to go. She always wants to go. She never wants to spend any time inside until it's time to go inside. Huh. Right, here we go. Well, let's take the battery. There we go. Pickles. Peach? Oh, hell yeah. Siege Rabbit, happy five years. Hell yes. I don't think I need more than one can opener. Maybe it's good to grab one just in case. Because if I die, where is it? Be nice to have one back, back in the house. Oh, I remember. Oh, do we have an eraser? Mm. Yeah, here's here's the rules for um Oh, it's full. Would you look at that? The rule that we are going to have today with respect to what can you tell me, what can you not? Some back seating is fine. Headlights, heater. Uh how do I how do I check the glove box? How does this thing work? Ah, like that. That's right. Um, back seating, a little bit of back seating, terrific. A little bit of back seating, terrific. But um, trying to tell me what's going to happen way down the line, like spoilers, we're not cool with. Fuck yeah! All right, we're 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 bringing this we're bringing this truck home. We're bringing this truck home. But first, I'm gonna I'm gonna go load up. Alta four to open your backpack. Ho ha ho ho ho. Didn't exactly do the best job of clearing. Like, I sort of came around this way. I really want to open up this thing. That's the one that I really want. But I'm worried that if I break it open, that will set off a car alarm. I don't think I'm ready for that shit. Because if I get a car, hmm. Hmm. 
Alright, let's let's drop off some of my bandages. Uh, so let's see here. If I look in my bag. Not entirely sure where to put this crafting material, so I'll just put that out there. Take off my jacket. So, all right, it's going to be bookkeeping time. It's going to be some administrative work. We're going to clean everything up. We're going to chuck a bunch of stuff into storage. And then tomorrow, when we awaken, we're going to drive a car. When our character awakens. I, I am going to take like about a three to five minute break to take old Cecilia into the backyard. This cupboard. Dude, this is, this is like the best I have done yet of just like... Collecting can shit, dude. Do I have another one in my inventory? No, it's all there. We're gonna be boarding the windows soon. Yeah, like we're we're gonna talk about some longer term stuff in a in a whittle bit. But I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased. I'm pretty pleased with what we've done so far. And the corned beef, I'll save. Corned beef is fucking really good, dude. So we're pretty good on food, pretty good on medical. Uh, we don't have good weapons. Randominus, is it possible to put soup in a saucepan and then bash the zombies while shouting hot soup? It's a great idea. I don't know why anyone didn't think of that. Oh, oh. All right, do I actually have any... Shit. The junk will go into the cupboard. All right, I gotta wash myself. Well, 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 if it isn't me on my own channel. Took a four minute break because I thought it would be enough for me to use the restroom and for me to take out the dog. I was wrong. I was wrong, my little doggy. I don't know how else to describe it. She needed to be spooned. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? When your like little doggy just is sitting there all being cute, you just gotta spoon that little dog. My dog is so dense. Like in like most people when they see this dog, they're like, oh she's like 40 pounds? 35? Got like a 55 pound dog, man. She's so big. All clothing. So dense. So that's why we call her our little turkey pig. <laughs> Another derogatory remarks. <laughs> She's just a solid brick of dog. That's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish some goals. First things first, when we uh, get all this done, we're going to go to bed. We're going to get up, fill our water. We're going to get our FUD. All that sort of good stuff. We have at our home base a ton of canned food, and I'm just gonna keep grabbing canned food, like no matter what, because eventually we're gonna need to probably make a farm somewhere. But I like this as a home base because it has just a good protective sort of surrounding environment. It allows us to store a good amount of stuff. And let me put on my stuff again. Where? And it has a nice location in the middle of a suburb, so we can continue to loot and gather up stuff. Is the lighting better if I pull this back, or does it get worse? It gets a little worse, so if I pull it quite a bit of ways forward, it looks a little better. All right. So, I want to talk about some cold, hard goals. 
Oh wait, did I fill that the saucepan? Where's my saucepan? Wait, 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 saucepan with water? Pour on the ground. There we go. Has water, can't use it as a weapon. Pathetic. Pathetic. So, here, here's our rough goal. Up here, we found a car with the keys in it. I'm going to drive a car. So we're going to drive a car, and we're going to continue to make our way towards this police station that should be right over here. Oh, I have an eraser now, huh? So we have we have sort of cleared. Let me... Running back over here just to make sure that we are covered while we do this. I knew it. I knew there was a zombie here. I knew there was a zombie on here. Yeah, dude, that's, that's, that's like that fun simulation thing. Like, no, 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 you can't write on the map, like, at all. All right, so I'm going to hit M. Four. All right, here's our... This is our home base. Let's just pencil in just quick. Scratches. So we've cleared those houses pretty well. well. I mean, I suppose we could do it on another one as well. You know, I'm going to remove these because I actually don't know how much of these will will really need. I think that if there's resources that we can't get in them, I'll mark. Otherwise, because like at this point, I've just basically been getting food and this saucepan as a weapon. This saucepan beats ass, man. This is a cast iron saucepan. Make sure there's no one else following. Dude, the double hit is such a relief. Saucepan man sounds like a superhero from a Mystery Men movie. <laughs> Or in an anime. Dude, I read six volumes of Chainsaw Man. And I was just like, what am I doing? I don't think I can get into this. All the way up to Bomb Devil. It was just so tonally jarring. Like, I literally didn't know what to do with it when I was reading it. And I, I, I almost want to, like, reread it again. Like, I really don't know what to think about it. Because, like, here's the thing. I, I play a lot of games. Oh, shit. I got a fucking holster, baby. Deputy pants. Yeah, I'll, fucking, I'll wear that shit. Does Chainsaw Man have villains like the Tick, the Midnight Bomber? What bombs at midnight? <laughs> See, the Tick was actually like, it, like, I didn't understand this as a kid, but that 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 show was intellectual as fuck. Like, I think it's actually still too intellectual for me. <laughs> but the thing about Chainsaw Man, like, the sort of oh shit, what the fuck? Like, the thing about... Nick says this game is pretty popular in Korea. Nicholas! Nicholas, the most powerful Nicholas that's ever lived.
Dude, Nick, have you played? Oh! I got bit. I'm fucked. I'm dead. No! No, I'm fine. I'm literally fine. Did you see me get bit? Holy shit, that's incredible. Dude, Nick, have you... Do you play many survival games? Yeah, I mean, I, was, I went on this rant earlier that, like, all survival games are typically irredeemable garbage. Typically irredeemable garbage. I cannot believe how fucking terrible those survival games are. But this one's actually, like, quite, quite fun. What I think makes it interesting is that it's, like, very hardcore, very simulation-y. Like, the fact that, like, these guys here, when I turn around, I can't see them anymore. They fade out of view. There's also a fucker down here. So right now I'm trying to clear the path to this van. Not this van here, but there's another van elsewhere. Right now I'm beating ass with a saucepan. <laughs> And, you know, it, it, it actually reminds me a good bit of Dark Souls in the pacing of it. Or Elden Ring, for any of you new, new uh, Soulsborne fans. Alright. Consider a frying pan instead of a saucepan? I have. It broke. So funny how like basic the, the combat looks, but it's actually so intense. Again, very Souls similar. Although someone described this game as a Souls-like survival. Dude, where are all these bastards coming from? Jim Gosser says, new Elden Ring player here, and I found the open world extremely jarring. Very empty. I'm using the horse to skip lots of the landscape. The pacing was strange. How how far in are you? Like, in terms of hours. Stomped on. What is this, police what? 20 hours or so? So you've probably done Lin, Limgrave, Weeping Peninsula, and probably gotten into, um... Probably a little of Liernia. Because I think... I, I have a weird opinion about Limgrave. I think the starting area of Elden Ring is the perfect starting area for the game. And was my least favorite part of the game. James says, I've done the main castle that you see dead ahead and the swamp. So you've you've done You've done um Stormvale Castle. I wanna wear a hard hat. I don't know of a single swamp that's nearby. Outside of the very tiny baby swamp. Excuse me, did I see safety goggles? Did I literally knock the goggles right off them? Hell yeah. Oh shit, yeah. 
pants do I have on right now? Scratch defense 10. Oh shit. Yeah, Jacob Godserve, I would say that for me, there's a large swamp west of the castle. I don't think there's a large swamp west of the castle. Stormvale's on a steep cliff face. If you go way out east, there's Kaelin. If you go way north... There's a sort of giant blue lake. Unless you mean at the very start of the game, the the place where the dragon is. All right, we're working our way towards... Unless you mean you enter Lyernia and then you immediately hug left in the giant cave swamp. Yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and what I would say is um, yeah, just, just if you feel like waltzing past something, go for it. If you feel like slowing down, go for it. There's so many fucking people in this area. I'm actually curious. What is my protection like? Oh. Well, I need some gloves. Wait. Why do I only have one... I only have one foot covered with my shoes? One shoe, shoe as a whole, get out of here. Keep stomping with your right foot. Oh shit, my saucepan broke. Get back down, St sit down. All right. All right, wanna buy a new shoe. That's so funny, one of my shoes is busted. All right, so now, now we actually have a problem, which is that I don't really have a weapon. So it's a dream of becoming a saucier. I know, I know, it fucking sucks. Yeah, Jacob Godserve, I think that, like, for me, I really slowed down. And I found that that really ramped up my enjoyment of the game. Requires an item in my hands. Alright, I'm equipping my mug of water. That's an open door. Go ahead and unequip this. <laughs> okay, very well. Very well. Let's go ahead and unequip this. All right, very well. Some scrap wood. Some chips on the ground. Am I hungry? Dude, how's it doing? I have not died yet, Albatross. I have not died even a little bit. Tell me, ooh, tell me, tell me so full if you're so good. 
All right, we have a lot of... <laughs> please, please have... Oh, we get a frying pan! Equip primary, fuck yeah. And corned beef. Yeah, I think I will take some of these tools. Just a shirt and some... All right, can you get swords or maces or anything? I, I don't actually know. There, Word Search Magazine? Get out of here. Wordless soap essay. A lot of stuff here. Dude, I can't believe. I can't believe that I literally only have a left shoe. Alright, left shin. Alright. So the goal is still the same. We're trying to clear the neighborhood. We're trying to clear this area here. Because this road is going to be the main artery that I drive along. So I kind of need to make sure that all this stuff is cleared. This one's fine because there's like a wall that's barricading. Bunch of meds in there. Were there? Gotta be careful I don't step on that glass because I clearly don't have anything. Really? You're crazy. There is stale cake on the ground. Oh, oh! Other rooms? Too late. Too late. Doesn't matter. We don't care. Painkillers? Yeah, it's fine. I don't feel pain in this game. It was sleeping tablets? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I don't care for sleeping tablets. I'm a really good sleeper. Try to open the window. Hey, don't, don't chew on that. Should I blow on my cat? Elysium Plains says, man, this stream. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? Oh. Okay, sit down there. Alright, good. It's gotta be upstairs. Did you hear that gunfire? Hold on one second, hold on one second. I'm getting I'm getting a, I'm getting a mission critical message. Alright, nice, good. Everything is fine. Is there a multiplayer? Yeah, I think this game is generally played multiplayer. So I'm damp. It's probably sweat because I'm wearing a lot of heavy. I don't know if that was... Well, because noise obviously attracts zombies. What are you doing? What are you doing, Despers? What are you doing? Death by Despy? I know, I know. It's rough. It's rough around these parts. Oh, fuck! Holy shit, what a stomp. Alright, did I get bit? Liam M. Taylor says, my Project Zomboid downloading, and I have a controller connected for it with my Steam Deck. Oh. Oh, I want a Steam Deck so bad. Okay, let's not. Let's not. Please don't. There's another one here. He, like, went off sprinting this way. Yeah, maybe he just heard the... Okay, we don't have a weapon. Alright. Alright. Yeah, I think that explosion... 
brought on a bunch. Hey, 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 let go. <laughs> this cat is going to be the fucking death of me, man. Oh, I, I do have it equipped. Dude, the range on this is terrible. need to find a better weapon. Okay, I want to see something here. I haven't done this in a bit. Need duct tape? I don't really have a lot of those. This game is so scary to play single player. That's why I have all of you, Unicron boy. Just listening to see if we can hear anything. All right, let us let us see. Holy shit, we have struck gold. Got the frying pan, put another frying pan into the duffel bag, bam, there it 